see all the stable I'm about to eat. That's how, that's my name when I was born. But my mother married an American, and he adopted me and my brother, and me and in turn adopted his name Weber. So my name is Mauricio Esteban Weber. Uh, first I would like to say that I apologize to you for the way that I presented myself initially. I was just upset because your honor denied me the witnesses that I need in order to present my defense to you. So that, that's the reason why I came off like that. I hope that you can forgive me for that. But, the state of South Carolina found that all criminal prosecutions began with probable cause, which is certain uh, statements that a, a prosecuting officer or arresting officer must make under oath in order to establish uh, probable cause for a person's arrest. In this case, the state found a probable cause upon a witness, a statement by the witness in a photo line. I'm a Hispanic of the mongoloid racial type. I am not white, I am not black, I am uh, my people from Costa Rica or Mestizo Indians. I'm going to present to you, or I'm going to try to present to you evidence that the detective selected a suggested photo lineup to guarantee that the alleged eyewitness Travis Carrigan would select my picture. I'm also going to present evidence to the best of my ability to show that from the angle in which when you approach the, uh, my, my mother's apartment, you know, the doorway, it's, it's at an angle and there's a china cabinet and various other furniture and things of that nature that obstruct the view. So it was impossible for him to have identified the suspect, myself or anyone. Uh, so the, the detectives, they placed me in a photo line of five African-American suspects. Four of the suspects were approximately three to four shades darker than me. The other suspect was about two shades darker than me. Then the darker a suspect is, the, dark, the, the lighter the background, you know, the background. And the, the lighter that the suspect is, me being the lightest, the darker the background, and then they put like a light beam so that Mr. Kerrigan would focus his attention upon me. And me being his neighbor, he has seen me on occasions. So, you know, when you look at what he said to the 911 operator, he told her that he peeked into the door initially. When he comes back, when the detectives are there, coercing him, influencing him, he says that he stepped into the door. So this is what the prosecution has found in their, their case upon perjury. Even if all that they say at the end of their testimony is true, you must return a not guilty verdict because you cannot base probable cause upon lies. That is fundamentally unjust in our system or in our democracy. So, and then I will present to you testimony or a written statement from his deceased friend who unfortunately died in a, a car accident to show that they didn't step into the doorway. They looked into the doorway, or as he told the 911 operator, that he peeked into the door. And uh, that's, that's about all that I can present to you because your honor, the prosecution has suppressed evidence. Your honor has denied me the witnesses that I need in order to present a defense. And uh, with that, thank you. And uh, I hope that you find me not guilty.